Hi guys, sorry to interrupt, there's no sound at the moment. Well, that was the best introduction I'd ever done, so I'll do it again. Very good evening, everyone. Hello. It, it, it was really good. It, it was, wasn't it? It was good, yeah, yeah. Damn it. Hello, everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Greetings to you all. Uh, a happy Thursday and a very warm welcome here to the Architecture Fringe 2021. Uh, we're broadcasting live here from SWG3 in Glasgow. And as we all navigate through the pandemic guidance and rules that we, uh, that we have to follow, uh, we thank you so very much for joining us online. My name is Andy Summers. I'm a co-founder and co-producer of the uh, co-director of the Architecture Fringe. And for the Architecture Fringe 2021, our provocation is unlearning where we encourage participants to interrogate behaviours, beliefs and biases in order to acknowledge how the world really is, to then reimagine how it could be. Hit the trailer. So that was just a very quick overview there of um, some of the events that are happening during Architecture Fringe, which is taking place over the next two weeks. Um, for this evening, what we want to do for this opening event is take you through some of those events, um, speak to some of the contributors, people who are putting stuff on the open program. And um, this evening, we're going to jump around between here in Glasgow and some other guests elsewhere uh, in the country as well. So. Um, as you might have gathered from the start, we might be subject to some technical difficulties. Um, if you will sort of imagine this as a cross between a Pritzker Prize lecture and Wayne's World, maybe. Um, that's the kind of vibe that we're, that we're probably going to arrive at. Um, so um, there's a little bit of audience interaction as well. So we've got a competition um, for tonight. Um, we've got um, an amazing prize for the competition, um, which I don't know if you can kind of see this. Um, this is a, a limited edition architecture fringe lateral flow test. Um, and um, the, we're going to ask a question in a second and um, then we'll draw uh, the prize at the end of this evening. So not that we're wanting to incentivize you to stay till the very end, but anyway, um, that's what we're going to do. Um, this is actually a genuine architecture fringe lateral flow, flow test. A lot of people have been saying that I just drew that on with a marker, um, but that's not true. Um, so the question that we're going to ask for that is, um, we'd like you to tell us who represented Scotland at the Venice Biennale in 2016 and what was the name of their project. Um, if you know the answer to that, um, send a direct message to the Archifringe account uh, on, on Zoom. So look for Archifringe and um, send it to them. Don't send it to everyone because then everyone will know the answer and you reduce your chances of winning. Um, so we'll do the draw for that at the end of this evening. Um, and I'm just going to hand you over now to, to Shona. Hi, I'm Shona, one of the other co-producers from the Architecture Fringe. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I guess if you have any questions or comments that you want to make during the course of tonight, if you just pop them into the chat at the bottom of your screen and we'll pick them up at the end. So as mentioned before, um, we're going to join um, some other hosts as well um, around the country. Um, our first uh, trip is to meet um, Haley and Bill. Haley and Bill are two um, up and coming stars of the architecture daytime TV scene. Um, and we're going to be joining them throughout this evening. Um, but I'm going to hand you over now to Haley and Bill. It's Archie Fringe TV. This is all about unlearning. Unlearning is what we're about on Archie Fringe TV. So whether you've got something you want to ask, something you want to tell us, or just something that you really want to get to the bottom of, Archie Fringe TV is here for your delight and pleasure, and we will cover everything architecture. Absolutely, Bill. I mean, <laughs> I'm learning. So um, unfortunately, we traveled forward in time there to uh, a time in the future that wasn't the start of what Bill and Haley were going to say. Um, we're going to go back to Bill and Haley and travel backwards in time to the start of their contribution, which is happening now in real time, definitely. Um, and we're going to hand over to Bill and Haley. Now, Archie Fringe TV. 
How clean is your practice? Scratching the bottom of the architecture itch. Two, one. Hello. Hi. I'm Hayley. And I'm Bill. And this is Archie Fringe TV. This is all about unlearning. Unlearning is what we're about on Archie Fringe TV. So whether you've got something you want to ask, something you want to tell us, or just something that you really want to get to the bottom of, Arky Fringe TV is here for your delight and pleasure, and we will cover everything architecture. Absolutely, Belle. I mean, <laughs> unlearning sounds a little bit dry, a little bit boring, but we are going to make sure it's not going to be boring. It's not going to be dry. It's going to be super engaging and fun, even. It's all about exploring where the gaps are between theory and practice. And those of us that happily straddle both. That's right, isn't it, Bill? It is, but I try not to straddle. I prefer to think that theory and practice are one and the same thing. I straddle. I love both and I hate both sometimes, uh, and that's all okay. And we have with us today the UNESCO winner of the 2021 Architecture Prize for her concept, which collapses that 50 minute, minute city concept. Fantastic, collapsing. Yeah. So, that, so should we go over to that now? We will, we're handing over to Miriam to explain all about that groundbreaking theory that she has about collapsing the 50 minute city. Over to Miriam. Good evening, Archie Fringe. My name is Miriam Brickhammer and I am the winner of the UNESCO 2021 Architecture Prize with my special concept, which I'm bringing to you this evening of folded architecture. Okay, so in layman's terms, uh, taking that very well-known 15 minute city concept with my notion, that concept becomes in reach of even the largest city. To demonstrate, I'm going to show you with the Gulch Viaduct in Nechkau just exactly how this concept works. So, here is the Gulch Viaduct. Now, I simply use my notion and I fold the architecture like so. Suddenly, a whole expanse can be spanned. It's very simple, but groundbreaking. This is going to change the face of urban planning and architecture. Straddling theory and practice with Archifringe TV. Hi, that was so interesting, wasn't it, Bill? It was groundbreaking and thought provoking. And, you know, it's something that all of us can really get behind. It got me thinking, and I hope it did too for you, at home or wherever you are right now. Perhaps you're even in the studio, drawing, designing, thinking yourselves. But you might also be starting to feel a little bit stiff in the shoulder. You might be feeling like you might need to move your hips a little bit. You might have been sitting too long at your desk today. We all know that feeling so well, particularly over the last year. And I know that feeling hunched over this table right now. So I know that you do over at your tables or desks or wherever you are. Now we've got something that can help that and it is taking the nation by storm. Mm -hmm. Bill, have you heard of Archaerobics? I have only heard of Archaerobics because you told me all about it. I love Archaerobics and I love the ladies that deliver it. They are JC and B, and they've been doing this for some time now. And it really is fitness for your mind, soul, and your body. All right, so it's not just your body. Yeah. You don't need any specific equipment. You can get up from your desk right now 
and have a go. So get up. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get up, Belle? We'll get up okay. shortly. <laughs> Uh, so we'll be getting up and we will be doing our aerobics and but you at home get up right now because this is really gonna blow your mind. Yeah. Over to JCMB. JCMB over to you. delivering to you Archaerobics! Archaerobics! It's the new thing, everybody. We are JCB. That's right, JCB here for your architecture movement needs. Okay, so. Yeah, everybody, we know, we got you. We know you've all been behind your desk. You've been getting you know, sort of achy and your shoulders feel like they need to move. Clickety click on those mouses. Boobity boom on the keyboard. So we got some moves for you. We're gonna share just how you got to start to get yourself moving. So get up. Get up everybody. And we'll begin. Okay, so you can start by just, you know, moving those legs on the spot. That's right. Moving the legs on the spot. Now you can grab a couple of tools like we have, or a couple of weights. You can use a can of macaroni. You can use whatever you like, but I like to use my hammers. And I like to use these things. That's great. We're gonna start by working those upper bodies this morning. That's right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the bottom and work our way, our way up, okay? So that is basically Starting with the foundations, the underpinning, and working up floor. One, two, three, four, five. High rise. Okay. And then we're gonna do the topping off, okay? Topping off. So that's gonna be from the ground, floor one, floor two, floor three, floor five, and then high rise. Topping off. Topping off. Okay. Ready. So we'll start with the foundations and go. Foundations. Floor one. Floor two, floor three, floor four, five, high rise and topping off. off. Okay, you wanna see those shoulders moving, those arms moving up and down, really working those biceps. Right now let's move on to the facade move, okay? This is for starting, all right? So the facading is stop. And go back, okay? So cover your faces your facades and then draw yeah. back. So you can start to feel where that's working, everybody. We know what's working there. Oh, wow, that is great. I feel that. Okay. Now we're gonna leave you with one more move. That's right. And this is when the planner comes in, looks at your plans and goes, no, 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 no. And the other side, no. no. No, 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 I don't like it. No, no, dance. Okay, okay, so we'll do that. So from the start, foundation up, deciding, plan. Okay, so let's go for that one. We're gonna start with the foundations. Yeah. For one, and two, three, four, Five, high rise. Topping off. Topping off. Topping off. Topping off. And then we're moving to the facade. Which is F. And back. Facade. And back. Facade. Pulling it back. Now with a bit of rhythm. Facade. Rhythm. Facade. Facade. And then in comes your planner. And no. no. And no. 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 And no, no, I don't like it. No. Nah. And no. And yeah. you can really go for it with this one. You know, you can really move your hips. You can say yeah. Loads of nose. Okay, okay we're okay, starting really to get rolled up, everybody. You can play this in the morning, in the middle of the day, and even in the evening. In the middle of the night, because we know that you all work in the studios to really, really lay. So enjoy your Archie Robics, everybody, and enjoy the Archie Fringe. Thank you, Jason. Bye, everybody. Bye. No. And no. no. I don't like it. No. Nah. And no. 
getting to the core of the architecture apple. Well, thanks Haley and Bill. Um, we look forward to joining you later on this evening. Um, I hope everyone was up um, taking part in the Alp aerobics there, um, the way to keep a healthy body mind and spirit um, in the world of architecture. So um, there'll be a little bit more audience uh, involvement later on in the evening as well. So um, that's just a pre pre warning there. Um, so we're, we're going to um, talk a little bit about the program um, for this year's Architecture Fringe. Um, and we're going to do that just by um, introducing some more of the Architecture Fringe team. The Architecture Fringe team is a team of volunteers who um, help coordinate and run the festival. Um, and we're just going to meet a few um, people who are on that team um, just now, um, and they're going to talk you through some of the events on both the core and the open program. If you're interested in finding out about any of these events, just go to architecturefringe.com um, and the event program is, is there for you to, to look through. So first of all, I'm going to hand you over to Liana Bauer, who is a co-director of Architecture Fringe. Um, and I'm going to pass you over to Liana just now. Hi, Liana. Yeah. Hello everyone, so I'm Liana, I'm one of the Architect French production team members and I have been working on with my colleague Reina and with Andy Summers on one of the strands we're exploring this year and um, that one is land. We have two events on unlearning land. The first one, uh, Homeless Unlearning from Indigenous Worldviews, is this Saturday at 10 o'clock. And I'm really excited that we managed to get so many different people from different cultures um, joining us for that conversation. Um, so we have Magnus Davidson, who is a research associate at the University of the Highlands and Islands and he was in the Environment Research Institute. Uh, we have Indrani Sikmani, who's originally from India and is now based in New York. She's a researcher and international development consultant specialized on social justice, gender, and human rights. And we have uh, Vivian Sunster, who's an anthropologist and artist from Palestine, who has founded the Palestine Airline, uh, Heirloom Seat Library. The entire event will be chaired by Miriam Halavi Abram, who is a multidisciplinary designer who is going to join us from Ethiopia. So we have like, you're spanning the entire globe in that conversation. And we have had some initial conversations of of course, our um, participants and our chair, and we have already discovered shared experiences um, in all, all of those locations with the feudalism exported by the British Empire and the colonialism and the ongoing impact that has on the current land use, on land management, on access to land, um, um, access to resources, on the ability to build up resources and reuse and harvest these resources. All three localities have developed different strategies um, to overcome these issues or to have better access to resources. Um, in India, for example, in 2014, the government has um, introduced the 2014 Forest Act to protect the indigenous um, mobile communities in the, who live in the forest. In Scotland, of course, we have a lot of community buyouts and ownerships. And in Palestine, Vivian develops a, a heirloom seat library and established that one. And um, Reina, maybe do you, what, what are you looking forward in, in that particular project? Oh, um, it, it so far, it's been so fascinating to meet everyone. And like, I think you, you mentioned earlier, um, seeing the commonalities between the groups despite the sheer like geography distance be between them um at first i think that was one of the things that we were slightly worried about was while we are interested in how these people how these different groups around the world have engaged with land and um, it was really heartening to to see that they actually found so much in common with each other yeah and um yeah it, it's going to be quite an exciting event uh, as well as the second land event which is common ground common good and that is taking place next saturday from 12 to 2 pm and um, for that we've got three community groups so uh, the eastside community network in detroit govern hill baths Commun community trust in glasgow and uh, southern avenue street vendors in kolkata 
Um, this again, uh, the event will basically be focusing on examining relationships to land um, in all three of these locations, but it, it's an ongoing piece of work. So on Saturday, what we'll be seeing is the first of many conversations and the beginning of what will be a much stronger piece of work, hopefully, which we will uh, release as things uh, come to fruition. Um, yeah, I think, I think there's already been a little bit of unlearning for us uh, in that project as well, instead of just um, reducing it to the usual fringe period, which is like two to three weeks, we have extended the yeah. program to the across the summer to the end of uh, autumn to pick up that conversation. And what I feel is particularly exciting this year about this year's fringe is that because of the pandemic, we actually have the opportunities to engage with a much wider audience, but also with participants from across the world, which we, the, which we wouldn't usually be able to do to that extent. Um, and what I also find really rewarding, I feel is that we, we, have, we have been able to have so many meetings with all of our participants beforehand that we actually managed to meet them and learn from them and share stories and they managed to meet each other and learn from each other. And it's going to be really nice to just um, share those experiences, I guess, with the audience and let them know. Um, so an, an event which is also kind of like tying in with, with these themes, but is slightly different, um, is our event on uh, unlearning whiteness, um, because unlearning land also is very closely linked to unlearning whiteness. For more than 500 years, the Western world has exported um, our understanding of land ownership and management and economic models across the world and across the globe, um, mainly for the benefit of white people or white Europeans um, and those extractive capitalist economies and colonial histories and racialized hierarchies have created the situation we find ourselves in at the moment. So we have another, pro another event uh, called Fictive Kinships and Counter Narratives, which will happen on the 17th of June at 7 p.m. And in that event, we are exploring um, the origins of whiteness, but we also want to look beyond that and, um, and move towards the space or, um, or find alternative ways of, of um, living and being and and exploring how, how we can deal with that. Um, in this event, we have um, Amara Spence, who's an artist, organizer, designer um, for social justice movements. Uh, and she's also founded the Black Land and Spatial Justice Project. And we have also confirmed Chris Demrake, who is from New Orleans and who's an architectural advocate, designer and educator. Yeah. I'm really looking yeah. forward to that event. It was, um, it was such a, such an interesting meeting before um, with especially Amara. Uh, I, I really did very much enjoy that. And as you see, we've developed those relationships and it's a completely different way. And we wouldn't have had these opportunities if it weren't for the pandemic. But that's one thing we've got to be yeah. grateful for. It's going to be a very different French, but an also more exciting French, I think, in many ways, because we have so many new opportunities and we hear so many voices which we wouldn't have been able to bring in. Okay, I think that, that we are handing over to Ruta. Oh, um, hi everyone. I am gonna talk to you about New Spatial Realities, which is another project we have on the core program that I'm working alongside Andy Summers and Chris Dobson on. So New Spatial Realities represents the next iteration of our New Typologies program. Uh, where we commission work and uh, it's been uh, going from 2017 when we had teams reimagining civic infrastructures and in 2018 we had Franken types that were exploring the hybrid building typologies and in 2019 we had retypes where invited contributors were um, kind of considering adaptive reuse of redundant buildings in the light of societal changes and climate emergency uh, and then as part of um, the core program this June, the new spatial realities represent kind of a research and design project, which invites participants to view 
the existing urban fabric from their own perspective and pursue a line of research and interrogation that responds to their own experiences of our shared spaces. Uh, in the light of pandemic and under the provocation of unlearning that the Fringe is exploring this year, we have asked those invited in the project to see how the space um, allows the expression of social negotiations, of ownership, access, community, aesthetics, materials. And uh, so we invited four teams to kind of uh, explore uh, what those new spatial realities are. So we have Civic Soup, who are an architecture and design collective based in Edinburgh, uh, who will be looking at our relationships with uh, wet spaces with a really great provocation titled Get Wet. And uh, they're going to have a talk uh, and allow us to explore some of these spaces virtually uh, on 11th of June uh, at lunchtime. So just check our website for all these events under the new spatial realities. Uh, the next participant in the project is Numa Studio, who are based in London. They're an interdisciplinary collective founded on diversity. And uh, Numa are unlearning through play this year, and they have created an amazing zine titled uh, The Lost in Play, which will be launched on 15th of June as part of this year's Architecture Fringe uh, in a talk that will be hosted by Callum Duncan as well at 1230. So all lunchtime slots. Uh, so you're welcome to kind of have a nice break during your workday and come and join us. Uh, Migrants Bureau uh, is the next team who are uh, exploring uh, a topic of food with their project about food landscapes. Uh, they're a social design and urbanism practice uh, who work with uh, migrant communities and disenfranchised communities in UK. And uh, they're going to explore how food tells stories in Bristol neighborhoods through platforms of film, sound, and uh, their talk is on 17th of June at 12.30. That's also gonna be on our website. And last but not least is Raising the Roof and Voices of Experience is our fourth team with the topic Households Then Really Book. So um, uh, Raising the Roof is our returning uh, uh, kind of participant. Uh, it's a collective of Scottish-based art, art, artists, Adele Patrick, Sue John and Janice Parker. Uh, who are creatives uh, in kind of investigating the context of care home culture. And they're joined by Voices of Experience, a great collaborative project by architects Suzanne Ewing, Jude Barber, and Nicola McLaughlin uh, that celebrates the female presence in architecture, built environment, and facilitates dialogues between experienced creatives and those who are starting their careers just now. And their project household draws from personal reflections of living and aging and, and it's inspired by raising the roof's aspirations to construct an alternative uh, to what's currently available in the current political landscape of housing social care and economics uh, the project uh, website launched today so have a look the nice thing about uh, the new spatial realities is that throughout the month we're going to be releasing more information as the teams are exploring the provocations um, and so keep an eye on it, keep an eye on our social media. Uh, and I just wanna uh, thank all the contributors who were so far providing really great material. And also um, as part uh, of my kind of personal favorite in the open program, also wanna invite you to kind of have a look at Archie Schools reviewing the fringe with our youngest members of the urban environment. And also visit an exhibition on power structures because um, as a very stereotypical part of me of, of architect, architect and architecture student, uh, I love a bit of concrete. So um, not very environmentally friendly, but I mean, the exhibition is really great. So have a look. Uh, and I'm, uh, thank you so much. Great, thanks everyone. Um, and thanks for uh, those introductions to some of the core program. Um, as Rita mentioned uh, just at the end, um, as well as the core program, obviously the, the absolute foundation of Architecture Fringe is the open program. That's what it, that's what it started on. Um, and that's what we're really, really keen to kind of celebrate. Um, we have a short film just now, just gonna give you a quick overview of some of the things that are appearing on the open program this year.
Hi all, uh, thanks again for joining us this evening. My name is Matt and I will introduce you to our first guest speaker for this evening, In The Making. In The Making is a, a group uh, of students from Mackinac School of Architecture, uh, Kester, uh, Cassia, Zoe and Lily. Um, they have this uh, amazing project, um, Make Big Noise in Govan Hill and I will allow just to now uh, reflecting on, on the project or was it yeah. Hi guys. Hi. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having us. Um yeah, so as you mentioned, we are a group of students uh, from the GSA and due to the lack of opportunities this year we decided to uh, seek out our own project and this is how the idea for the end of making and make big noise was born. So uh, make big noise is a research project project that investigates self built and co design with young people. So uh, we started with conducting a series of interviews with uh, people involved in arts architecture and co design and then we collated all the information and advice that we had been given into a publication. There was also a really good opportunity for us to uh, discuss our thoughts on code design and ed architectural education and community engagement. And it became a starting point for our own first self-built uh, project for a charity system of Scotland that is going to happen this July. Yeah, and I think, you know, we can uh, admit that we weren't initially going to do this first research or in the form of just conversations with people um, in the in the, in the field, um, and it was only really after you know un, un, undertaking the first or having the first conversations that we really began began to understand um, how valuable it was going to be, um, and just how open it was. Really nice to step into that kind of community and how open they were uh, with sharing their knowledge and advice and um, and yeah, being really encouraging, which has given us the confidence. I don't think we would have gained um, had we not done this. Um, and we, you know, we learned a lot of practical advice on co-design and project builds and approaches to that and practicalities of like working as a group um, with our own things going on at the same time. Um, we also, you know, I think we hoped that it would, um, and it, you know, it definitely has expanded our understanding of what architecture can be and also uh, started to open up avenues um, for us um, we're, as where we are now, because I think, you know, leaving third year, the, you know, you're, in, you're only really handed one path and you're not really shown alternative options. So I think that's really done that for us and given us the confidence to kind of look at alternatives. Um, so I think the publication is really an uh, exercise of this learning through these conversations and a, con a condensing and an editing of it. Um, but we also really, um, you know, set out to continue that knowledge sharing and and you know present something in a in a, in a, sim, a simple overview really, um, that would without the jargon and that you know might be useful for students in our in our position. Um, so yeah, and we're just kind of hopefully that will do that, and uh, we're just excited, you know, to delve deeper because we understand we've only scratched the surface and there is gaps. Um, so so yeah, to to cover more is. Um, our next steps. And the, the publication is, is online now, I think, on our website um, for anybody to go and have a look at. Um, the, I think we're going to put a link in the, in the chat. That's great. So thank you so much for your contribution both today and uh, as part of the open program to the Architects Print. So thank you for that. And People, please uh, follow this guy. They're doing amazing work. So I think we have, uh, I think, Hill and Bill needs, uh, needs us now. I think they, they are having, we were just informed that they want to contribute as well. Yeah, so, I think so. Yeah. Starting to get into this theme now, aren't we? That's 
That's right, Bill. It's uh, really interesting to be learning these unlearning processes. It's truly experimental, isn't it? It's about being off the book, would you say? Mm, outside the book, outside the box. Off grid, mm. crossing boundaries, mm. doing things like a cowboy or something. That kind of thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. sort of really just going at it. Yeah, yeah. So, up next, we bring you something truly exclusive. A true, true, true exclusive music video, Bill. And I've got a feeling that you like this band. It's great. This is their brilliant new song, Building a Wall by Block. Wall, 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 wall. Glass, the new fragrance from Norman Foster. So yeah, so we're very proud this year to be sponsored by uh, Chrome and Glass, the new fragrance by Norman Foster, um, as well as our other supporters, which we'll mention at the end of tonight's um, tonight's program. Um, uh, that's available at Chrome and Glass in airports. So if you want to uh, get any, it's available in airports. Um, we're just going to um, quickly uh, talk a little bit about um, the theme for this year, which is on learning. Um, really, I suppose, just to both say thank you um, to all of the people who fed into this theme, this topic evolving. Um, I think it's fair to say that this year, the theme has been quite an interesting kind of 
evolving discussion points sort of within the group. And there have been a lot of people both sort of within the group and outside of the group who've really helped contribute to that discussion. Um, there's a lot of people obviously doing a lot of work thinking about these, um, these topics and thinking about these themes. And in the same spirit, um, as part of this year's Architecture Fringe, we're wanting to um, share resources and share information as much as possible. So um, this is just a very small plug for um, a resource, an online resource that we've set up. It's um, contributed to by lots of people. We've drawn in a lot of information from different sources. Um, it's going to appear on the screen just shortly. Um, and that's an open resource that you too can contribute to. So if you have information that you think would be interesting for this theme and the discussions and the debates around it, then please feel free to explore that resource and, and add your own additional resources as well. Um, so that's just going to come up on the screen just now. And then I'm going to pass over to Andy, who's going to talk to another one of our open program contributors. And from a very warm Glasgow, we are going to call Aberdeen now. Uh, and we're going to chat to Hilary Nicholl of Look Again Festival. Hilary, are you there? Hi, Hilary, how are you doing? Very well, thank you, Andy. Yep, I'm actually Good. in Hockney right now. You are, I know. I didn't want to game, give the game away. Tell us how you're doing up there. A little bit wind beaten, I think, but, um, but very good. Well, we could do with the breeze in here, let me tell you. Um, thanks so much for joining us, we really do appreciate it. Um, Hilary, you are um, running uh, Look Again Festival in Aberdeen. Do you want to tell us a little about Look Again? Yeah, so it's a festival of art and design, and um, it began in 2015. And uh, the strap line for the festival has been See the City Through Fresh Eyes. So what we do is commission artists and designers to create new work for the urban environment and the work is very public. It's put in, in across the city um, on an annual basis until 2019, of course, when it's, uh, you know, that was our last festival. We haven't done a festival since then. But in 2018, we uh, joined Gray School of Arts. So we're actually a unit within the art school now. And we run a year round program that is not just a festival, but also a project space, um, networking events, et cetera, et cetera. So um, quite a, a nice trajectory of development over the sort of five or six years since mm -hmm. we started. And it, since, uh, since 2019 and your work at the university, what, what's the kind of, how, how's Aberdeen doing culturally through the pandemic? What, what's the chat from, from the city? Um, well, I think like every city, you know, it's, it's, it's been tough for everyone. Um, being in the art school, we're very concerned about well-being of students and opportunities for them especially around the green shows. So we have actually done a very um, ambitious degree show the past couple of years, creating very much sort of immersive 3D virtual environments for the students to show work in. So there's this really interesting move from physical into virtual space for students to sort of think about that um, again has been challenging, but has certainly created you know, really interesting opportunities as well. And I think Probably the other bigger, big, big ticket in Aberdeen is the, the art gallery we opened just at the end of 2019. Big redevelopment, really exciting. And, you know, the sort of potential has been unfulfilled as yet because it had to close so quickly. But it's back open again. We're, we're coming level one in on Saturday. And uh, the, the British Art Show is arriving in Aberdeen uh, for the summer. So we're very excited about seeing that uh, come to Scotland. Um, the only Scottish venue for that, so that's exciting, yeah. Now, look again, I've, I've used the Architecture Fringe platform before, which we really appreciate. And this year you've created um, an event called Security, Rights and Shelter, Unlearning Aberdeen's Tower Blocks. Do you want to tell us about the, the genesis of that event? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's really marking what we think is quite a big event in terms of architectural history for the city in January eight large post-modern, uh, sort of post-war uh, housing blocks were listed. They were given an A-grade listing. Um, and in the context of kind of listing social housing in Scotland, I think there's only three that are listed in the whole of Scotland until this year when Aberdeen suddenly has eight tower blocks. Um, I think this has been both a kind of cause of celebration in the city, but also a contentious and the City Council is currently going through the motions of trying to have the listing overturned 
Committee of Representations to Historic Environment Scotland. So we just wanted to explore that within the context of unlearning. You know, uh, there's lots to think about there. Um, and so we've got uh, an event on the 16th of June. It's at six o'clock. It's online. Um, and we have three, uh, three, three speakers. We've commissioned a new film about the book um, that will be shown. It's by a photographer called Steve. And we also have Miles Glendinning, who is the um, professor who put together the listing bid. He made the case for the listings to happen. So we're going to talk about the buildings in, in the kind of bit much bigger global context of tower blocks and the history of, of, of tower blocks um, across the world. And then we have the very fantastic Kate McIntosh also coming to speak. She's the um, you know, passionate advocate for social housing, um, winner of the Jane Drew Prize and um, architecture. And so we're really looking forward to getting she and Miles particularly in the room together to discuss the, the, this, this um, this big event for the city um, of Aberdeen. Yeah, it's a really great lineup, Hilary. That's super. Yeah, and I think your event's close to selling out, isn't it? It is actually. Yes, I'm. I'm really amazed. Um, I'm delighted that um, we've got a hundred places available, um, and I think we're we're nearly there. But um, not too late to sign up yet. Um, and we'll be recording it, so it'll be available after as well. Yeah, well, I've, I've luckily enough got a ticket, so I'm really looking forward to it. But uh, Hilary, thank you so much for joining us from Orkney. We really do appreciate the best of luck with your event and uh, enjoy the festival. Thanks, and delighted to be part of it. And can I just say thanks to Jude Barber for introducing me to Kate McIntosh. That's really great. So thanks for that, Jude. Yeah, Kate's really amazing. Good luck with your festival. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Hilary. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Right. If I'm not mistaken, I think we might have some Architects Anonymous next. You might be right, Andy. Yeah. Who's, who, who is this? We don't know. We're going to wait and see. So we're we'll going back <laughs> to Hayley and Bill for Architects Anonymous. I think. Uh, I, yes. Hayley, are you there? Uh, Hayley, yes. are you there? There they are. Yes, and can Bill you as well. Hear us? Yeah, yeah, you're coming through loud and clear. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. Neil and uh, and uh, and uh, Andy. Um, <laughs> so. Um, so this is us. This is Haley. Hi, and I'm Bill. And this is Archie Fringe TV. And we're going to be bringing you something extra special this evening. Architects Anonymous. That's correct. And it's also known as Architecture Pickles. We thought we would introduce you to some of the best known pickles that you might come across in the architecture world. So we're gonna start by sharing with you a couple of our pickles. This is a pickled onion. It's a silver skin, and we've got a very difficult pickle for you to help us to think about right now. That's correct, Bill. Uh, so earlier in the week, uh, people called in on 0800 BRICK, that's 0800 BRICK, and they left us anonymously, and some people uh, actually claimed who they were, and they shared their architectural dilemmas. They didn't have to be <laughs> architects, um, they could just uh, be people that use buildings. Okay, so here we go, we'll start uh, with this one. Hello, Melanie here from Liverpool. Um, basically, the pickle that I'm in is, I'm trying to find decent books to underpin my practice. Now, when I go to the library, yeah, the only books that I can see and most of the books that I can find are by men. Now, what's going on here? Where are the books by women? I'm really struggling to find the books by women. Can you help me, please? Thanks. I've got quite a lot to say on this topic because I have written a number of books. And uh... well, actually, <laughs> sorry, Bill, but I will interject there um, as a woman myself and as someone that has come across this exact dilemma in the libraries, uh, finding those women academics, and there are lots out there. Um, can be difficult for some, because, you know, sometimes people like you, Bill, sorry, I know you've written a lot of books uh, to tend to dominate uh, those library shelves. So uh, I would say to you, Melanie in Liverpool, just go up to your uh, manager there at the library and 
bloody ask. Ask for those uh, women academics, and they those books will be shown on those shelves. So that's that's me. That's that. I'm I'm responding to that pickle there. Okay, moving right on to the cornichon, or uh, this is a burger pickle, or a gherkin, if you will. Maybe at your part, your neck of the woods there, Bill. Uh, I just want to check, can everybody hear uh, the, uh, the, the pickles? Can you hear the pickles okay? Just give us a little nod there, those of you with your screens on. When we uh, recently played the Liverpool pickle, could you hear that okay? Little yeah. nod. Is that a nod? Yeah. That's great. Okay, great. So moving on to pickle number two, numero two. Hello. Um, I'm ringing in uh, from Burnley. Basically, I want a double dormer on my cottage and the plan is saying it's incongruous with the rest of the street. And I'm saying there is no rest of the street. I'm the only house on the street. What do you recommend uh, when coming up against a planner who doesn't want you to do what you want to do? A planner stopping intervention there, mm. lol. Uh, what a surprise, that's a double dormer dilemma. Bill, can you, um, yeah, you, do you that, want to share that's, a bit that? That's a difficult pickle there. I would suggest that you give that planner a gift. That's it, wine. Beano cheese, anything that they like. Uh, yeah, just feed their ego. Yeah, feed them. Great. Okay, so moving on to the third pickle. This is the last wow. pickle we're going to come to today. Wow. This is a pickle supremo. This is a British pickle. Uh, it's, it's a pickled egg. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's let's hear it. Well, let's see if uh, the this pickle here that we're about to hear is as large as uh, this pickle that I'm holding in my fingers. Here. Hello, um, I'm just ringing because uh, worryingly uh, a developer has just been clearing a woodland site um, really close to us and um, actually we don't think that they have permission. Um, it's happening right now actually, it's uh, Easter weekend and um, yeah so I can't get through to anybody and I'm pretty sure this isn't right. Uh, I have looked at the planning portal and uh, it looks like uh, they weren't supposed to be doing this during nesting season. Um, we're quite distressed here as a community and we'd love to get your thoughts and advice here because uh, we're feeling pretty powerless. That was a disgusting pickle. It really left a really bitter, disgusting taste in my mouth. Yeah, it was big. What I would say there is you don't sound powerless. You sound pretty powerful. And what you're doing right there is exactly the right thing. You're raising up your voice and you're not letting those developers get away with it. Making them be seen for what they're doing. That's the right thing to do. That's great, Bill. Full stop right there on that pickle. I think that's really great advice. Now, um, we really launched into the pickles there, forgetting uh, to remind you um, that uh, we, as part of Arca Fringe TV, or did we forget? Or did I just, actually, this is, yeah. Well, we wanted to tell you about how things are practiced. That's it. You can sign up for a daily scenario, which we will introduce for you, and you can take part and help us to, you know, understand some of those common pickles in architecture over the coming weeks. That's correct. So starting on Monday, we're going to be going through, there's a daily pickle, a daily scenario, a daily dilemma that you can uh, respond to, you can contribute uh, to the conversation there in response, and that's our alarm going off. <laughs> We want to so uh, thank Archie Fringe for the amazing production values, really the, great. the big production budget that you've given us today. Because working in daytime, daytime TV, we don't usually get that sort of uh, investment. No, so it's been really fantastic. I've been able to shoot up my hair, and we've been able to buy these pickles as part of this beautiful event. So back to the Archie Fringe TV group, uh, sorry, Archie Fringe team, and we will hopefully see you later. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you, Hayley and Bill, um, for a really great uh, set of dilemmas there and a really um, sound response as well. Um, as 
Ailey was saying, um, if you would like to take part in a debate and discussion about a daily dilemma, this is all happening next week through the Archie Fringe TV project. Um, you can sign up on the website, which I may or may have not mentioned before. It's architecturefringe.com, and it's a really lovely, excellent website. Um, and if you go there, you can sign up to that and any other events as well uh, that you might be interested in. Um, so we're just um, drawing to a close um, just now. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's contributed this evening, but um, we're gonna hand over now to Liana, who's gonna um, take us through some of those thank yous and some of the mentions that we need to make this evening. Yes, hello. So there's a couple of thank yous we want to get out. Um, first of all, to Becca and Anna or Bill and Haley, who kept us so well entertained all evening and made us exercise after a stressful day at work. Um, everybody involved, <laughs> everybody involved in just setting up this evening and uh, running us through the program. Um, and then, of course, our funders uh, who made all of this possible and who 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 keep us encouraged and 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 fund us. Um, first of all, Creative Scotland, particularly Helena Ward and Andrew Leach, and also the Scottish government. Um, a big thank you also to our supporters, Helen Lucas, Architects Collective Architecture and Moxon Architects, um, all our pa Patreon supporters, every dime counts, every single uh, support um, makes a difference to us. Um, so please keep it coming. And then of course, to all of our co-producers and contributors from the open program uh, to the core program, um, but also our new producers who you haven't seen yet, but you will see throughout at the Fringe. Um, and then of course, to the wonderful production team who has been pulling together this year's Fringe with me. Um, and then also a big thank you, I think, to everybody who keeps uh, challenging our views and encourages us to unlearn. And with that, I hand over to you. <laughs> To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, so I just wanted to say that, as Leanne mentioned, every little counts, so I wanted to invite everyone to follow us on social media, such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and other platforms. Uh, sign up to our newsletter, where we keep you up to date with our events and kind of things that are coming up. Um, uh, watch our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to that. It's very important for us. Uh, all the uh, events eventually will find uh, their way onto our YouTube channel and you'll be able to watch them again. And as Leanne said, don't forget Patreon. Um, uh, you can, I'll, I'll share a link in the chat as well. Uh, but uh, wh whichever way you can support us, even coming to our events or spreading the word around and telling your friends uh, or foes to come and join us. Uh, we'd be very, very thankful. And uh, thank you also for coming here tonight and uh, watching our uh, opening. Thanks, Rita. So we have just one um, additional message just to add on the end of that. Um, I'm gonna hand you over to Shona now for that. Okay, uh, I'm sure all of you will have seen on our Instagram account, but we have the graduate showcase coming back this year um, and we've extended the deadline and that is at 5 p.m. tomorrow. So if you're graduating from one of the architecture schools in Scotland, um, please get your submission in. And yeah, we're going to launch on the 18th of June um, and it's going to be great. So thanks. And just to close off the evening, um, just before we hand back to Bill and Haley for one last word, um, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Erin, who's been uh, manning the technical side of this whole event. Um, there's an amazing kind of, you know, like Sky TV sort of setup over here that you can't see, but um, with very, keeping very cool and um, handling everything that's kind of cropped up. Um, so big thank you to Erin for that, for that as well. So um, the final word goes to um, Bill and Haley. I'm going to pass you over back to them now, live. That's right, we're live and thank you all so much up in Glasgow. Uh, um, sorry, sorry, we were going to do a live introduction to that. Uh, video because we just want you all to raise your glasses 
That's right. When we Woo! get it, Gary, the producer on the side here, of course, we've got a confetti cannon. And uh, yeah, so we just wanted to say this is such a celebratory moment, the start of Arky Fringe. And whilst this has really been so successful and so celebratory, we all have our challenges. We all have our pickles, don't we? We all have our dilemmas. And that's really important, wouldn't you say, Bill? It is, and like we were talking about in the car on the way over, uh, about overwork from Surrey, some of those pickles can be a real challenge. So we're gonna put a little bit of a uh, lyric uh, in the chat there. Let yourselves go, okay? Because part of unlearning is really just letting yourself go. Letting it uh, all hang out. Thank you, bye-bye. Yeah. Sorry to interject, um, yes, but I've missed one quite important part of the evening. We will go back to Hayley and Bill in just a second, but um, I've just been reminded that actually we do have a winner of the Architecture Fringe Limited Edition Lateral Flow Kit. Um, the answer to the question was who represented Scotland in the Venice Biennale in 2016. It was Lateral North. Uh, not lateral flow and the project was uh, prospect north um, and the winner of that competition is uh, zoe um, from in the making so well done zoe that uh, a lateral flow uh, kit will be on its way to you um, we'll now go back over to uh, bill and Haley, and i apologize very much for interrupting that video well Haley, you're gonna have to decide what is important to you is it what we do here in your career, or is it your family?
didn't I know how we would go we find you from the start I falling apart was he good wasn't he bad it matters he can be mine but in a little bit more than me More security Easy and freedom I know him so well To understand me